What's up everybody, welcome back to the vlog. My name is Phil Platocha. Today, we are going to be talking about my 50 mile plus assessment of the Nike Zoom X Invincible. Um, why I'm choosing 50 miles right now instead of 100 like I previously stated, is I do have some corrections in terms of um, experiences within the shoe that I would like to set straight uh, with the record. Um, and then we can also do some damage assessment. There isn't anything too crazy right now, but there's things we can definitely talk about. So uh, definitely want to get those corrections out. So before we get into it, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel. You know the rest. Uh, love you guys all for, of course, subscribing and already being part of the fun. There's going to be lots of cool stuff coming up anyways. So without further ado, let's get into it. So first things first, uh, let's go over general specifications of the shoe. The shoe itself, uh, depending on your size, can vary anywhere from about 10 to 11 ounces. Um, in size in eight and a half, it is about like 10.2, 10.3 ounces, and then that size obviously goes up from there. You know how that goes. Um, that puts it at about 300 to 310 grams on average, which is very similar to the weight of the Nike Infinity React Run Flying at two and the one. So it seems to be a pretty common trend for Nike to make these heavier end shoes with a little bit more foam, a little bit more material. Uh, with the intent of making them feel lighter based on the foams and things like that that they've got going on. Um, so again, uh, this is just, I think, a Nike thing that they understand more is sometimes uh, better. Um, other things to mention, uh, the stack height of this shoe is about 9 millimeters, has the feel about 8 to 10 millimeters, uh, nothing too insane about that. Uh, the forefoot, I believe, is either... I think it's 28 millimeters here in the forefoot and then 37 in the heel, giving it that 9 millimeter difference. Um, but it does have the feel of, you know, uh, the tempo next percent, as you can probably see here. And uh, yeah, it's a very good feel overall. And it also does simulate um, a bit of the stack height feel of the Pegasus Turbo and the Pegasus Turbo 2. So it's a good um, successor to that shoe in particular. Uh, that opinion has not changed, um, of course. So uh, let's go into some of the other stuff. So. Uh, something that the shoe is taking that is very similar to the Infinity React series is, of course, this back um, heel guard, heel plate, I guess you can say. Um, it's not the same material. It's a lot more flexible, but it is good for stability because that is something this shoe really does need when, of course, we're talking about a huge um, chunk of Zoom X that's basically going to be your support for this shoe. Um, that's kind of one of the major pieces in the upper that I do really like. Uh, the upper here is kind of a mix of like mesh and fly knit. Um, it is a lot thicker though, of course. And uh, that kind of brings one of my big corrections to the shoe, which we'll get to in a minute here. Um, the shoelaces are pretty much flat, kind of thick. Um, and that has been uh, something that hasn't really changed opinion wise. Um, I think the shoelaces do kind of run a little bit short. Um, I'd be more keen to having a shoelace that resembles more like the Tempo Next Percent's laces where they're a lot thinner and um, just a little bit longer so you can tuck them in accordingly. Um, it's hard to do double knots in this shoe unless you really lock yourself in. Um, in my case, I don't really need to. Uh, the shoe, again, is true to size uh, from how it feels. Um, if you do feel it is a little bit wider, you can go down to half size if you really want to. I'm actually seeing it right now. It does say flying it really poorly here on the side. Um, I get, again, if they call it flying it, I believe it, but it d does seem to be kind of like a mix and kind of a match of something else going on as well. Um, anything else in the upper to mention? Uh, the tongue is just flat across. It's not, um, you know, pushed off to the side like some of the Vaporfly uh, Next Percent series shoes. So that's kind of a refreshing feeling to have a shoe that isn't uh, got it pushed to the side. Um, let's talk bottoms and midsole. So yeah, again, uh, Zoom X foam rolling all the way across the shoe with a fun Infinity React design here on the side by the heel uh, area of the shoe. Uh, directly on the bottoms, let's come see what the damage looks like. Um, can I do it like this? I gotta do it like this. It's been a hot minute since I've done it in this sort of fashion. This is what the shoe looks like after 50 plus miles on both shoes, as you can see. Um, not a whole lot of mess going on uh, in this area, but there's two places I would like to focus on, and they're in the right foot. So we're just going to keep the left one back here and just kind of talk about it as we go along. So uh, before we get into that particular stuff, the bottoms, of course, is just one solid piece of rubber here that is uh, essentially got a fun uh, lug pattern. Not a very deep one, um, but it is pretty satisfactory for what I want to get done with it. So when you're running on the roads, um, it's got a good catch, good grip. Uh, this piece here, again... Um, Still working through it to see if it's uh, good or bad, or I'm just kind of neutral about it. Um, again, still exploring this with great interest. 
Uh, based on the wear, we'll kind of talk about something in there too. Uh, the heel doesn't have a huge amount of wear and tear because I'm not heel striking, of course. Same with this piece right there. So the two things I do want to talk about um, immediately with the bottoms. One, I do have this four foot wear up here. Um, that is kind of interesting. That doesn't really happen too much in my shoes. And I'm guessing it's as a result of running in sand. Um, I've done this two or three times in the shoe now where I've run along Siesta Key in Florida uh, just to knock it off my bucket list. And it's possible that as you're running in the sand and you get a little bit of slip, um, the forefoot may be just taking a little bit more of a shred. And that could be the case as to why it is shredded the way it is. And um, yeah, it's uh, not so bad right now. I mean, again, I'm not a, like a major toe forefoot striker in this particular area, but I'm, I am going to observe it for a little while just to make sure that it's not the stack height of the shoe that could be um, leading to this type of wear and tear immediately. Um, that being said, uh, the areas that I do always watch, which is this side of the right foot, um, it is experiencing a little bit of burn, but not a whole lot where I'm too concerned about it right now. Um, that being said, um, still observing the shoe at these distances. Um, the one thing I do want to talk about is this particular uh, area right here. I believe this is where the arch support of the shoe is. So I think the shoe is neutral as, uh, if we're talking arch support, which makes sense. Um, I was anticipating that based on how the lugs were set up on the bottom of the shoe and how much higher they are than the arch support of this particular area of the shoe, that you wouldn't see any burn or wear and tear in this area. Um, that being said, it looks like it is experiencing a little bit of impact, and that may be possibly my running style. There might just be excess dirt here that's um, kind of developing. It seems like there's a little bit of dirt, but it is hitting the ground, and you are experiencing impact in this area. So despite how much rubber they've got here and, uh, you know, the art support you may be expecting, it doesn't surprise me that ZoomX sinks the way it does and gives you a little bit of instability and a little bit of cave-in to the shoe as uh, we see right here. So um, let's talk about the feel of the shoe as we get into some of the other items here. Actually, no. Before we talk about feel of the shoe... So before we talk about the feel of the shoe, let me address one more thing I do want to correct. So somebody did ask me in the comments uh, on Strava that uh how does the shoe feel in terms of warmth and all that because it looks like a woolly coat that was something i said i was kind of indifferent to originally but now as i'm running with it more and i've experienced it more like running on the beach or running on the roads what happens is the shoe is not very breathable at all uh, as a matter of fact when i was finishing up my run and you know uh the sweat drips down your legs down to the socks and into the shoe it doesn't circulate itself out. You do feel uh, the shoe just absorbing the water and you do feel that like spongy feeling of like, you know, water in uh, more or less the toe box area. And you can't really use the shoe like for a two a day because well, it's like soaked and you have to let the shoe kind of breathe itself out in order to get that water. You gotta, you know, evaporate it. So the breathability is not great on the shoe. That being said, it could be pretty good on like colder running days. But if you wanna take this like on a hot day, um, maybe a different color scheme that isn't gonna make the shoe hot so like the white and like yellow and blue version of the shoe is probably good um, But this one you probably don't want to do long distances um, During like a hot humid day because you're just gonna have a really weird time in the toe box and like the sweat going into the shoe and absorbing You know all of that in here. So that's one of the big corrections I wanted to issue with the shoe last time the indifference versus what I'm experiencing with it now This is why we do these reviews so we can uh, of course Kind of just talk about it as we go because i don't have the answers for everything until i experience um the things in the shoe and of course if you guys will listen to it and hopefully take that advice uh, accordingly um what else can we talk about with this shoe um yeah the feel of it of course um so as i mentioned before this hasn't really changed all too much the shoe is kind of unstable because you are trading in your stability of running for a little bit of speed because the shoe is in fact with the ZoomX simulating, um, how would I put it? Uh, the the way the shoe is built, you are it feels a lot lighter than it really is, and you really do go faster than you think in this particular pair. Um, that being said, of course, you lose a lot of stability because ZoomX, uh, by its nature, is not a very stable foam, and that's usually why they always put React with like something like the Pegasus Turbo Two. Uh, to offset the stability so you can have um, that kind of cushion to sink into rather than pushing in and then losing that uh, ground and that stability. 
Um, do I like it though? Yeah, of course. I don't really mind the instability so much. Um, it is interesting to run with like a slightly uh, inflamed ankle in this particular pair. You just gotta wear like an ankle cast or some kind of like ankle compression. And it's not really a bad thing to watch out for. But yeah, it is kind of hard to run in this shoe kind of slow in my opinion. Uh, because of how springy it is. Like, I remember I was doing a group run and we were running like 8.30 pace, uh, 9.30 pace, maybe even a little bit above that. And people were saying I was like bouncing around like a bunny in this particular shoe. And there was just no way for me to like be able to have like a neutral, like a gait that didn't have me bouncing around because the Zoom X was just so bouncy. It just wanted to go fast. And um, yeah, that's more or less my fault for picking a fast shoe on a group run. I should have probably run like in my Infinity Reacts or like Pegasus Turbos, who knows. Um, so those were kind of the major corrections of uh, the shoe that I did want to address. I can't think of anything else right now, but yeah, overall, um, yeah, this is a shoe definitely good for more speed work, for more everyday training that is a little bit mildly above your like super relaxed pace. Um, definitely got to watch out for the stability, make sure that, um, you're not in any sort of pain or you're ready to go fast at like a whim, uh, when you're running in this particular pair. And, uh, yeah, so far, uh, the wear and tear isn't bad. I think this shoe can definitely last 300 to 400 miles, like the average length of most of these pairs. And, um, I don't know. I don't think I have anything else I need to like currently address with it. I mean, I like it. I like it a lot. Um, I'm trying to circulate it more with like the Tempo Next Percent uh, because I like both shoes very much. Um, so there's going to be like some mixing and matching that we're going to do in there for sure. So uh, yeah, I think that's all I've got for now. If you guys got any questions about the shoe in terms of feel, sizing, uh, whatever else that comes to mind, please let me know in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. So that being said, I think I'm going to end this entry right here. Next review will be probably uh, officially at 100 miles because that's a really good mile marker to look into the shoes and whatnot. So uh, yeah, thanks for watching this entry. I'll see you guys real soon.